Well, we all love living in and visiting the Eastern Sierra. We know how great it is. And Bishop and Mammoth Lakes are so great as to be in the running for Outside Magazine's Best Town in America. Now, the best town in America, Outside Magazine says, the kind of place with top-notch restaurants, vibrant farmers markets, friendly neighborhoods, and unparalleled access to hiking and biking trails. In short, the perfect jumping off point for adventure. This year, best towns are grouped into four categories, beach, river, mountain, and culture. Now both Bishop and Mammoth are in the mountain category. Outside readers can vote for their favorite towns at Outside Online. Now the initial bracket is made up of 60 towns selected by outside editors. There was also four wild card entries. You might remember we talked about Mammoth trying to get one of those and sure enough Mammoth did get a wild card entry. Now over the next six weeks readers will be able to vote once per round for each of the six rounds of voting on Outside Online. The winner of each round will advance until the final two towns face off in a showdown to determine the best town of 2016. Now, other towns in the mountain category, some of them include Durango, Colorado, Jackson, Wyoming, and Sun Valley, Idaho. Now, the entire story is posted on our website, sierrawave.net. We have the links there to Outside Magazine and online, and Sierra Wave TV3, as you likely know, is an outside television affiliate. Well, Deb Murphy filed this story for Sierra Way Media. The Inyo County Board of Supervisors started the water conversation focused on this runoff year plan from the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, but ended up in the larger issue of raising the water table in the valley to reduce the still nagging decline in healthy, diverse vegetation. Now, Tuesday, the supervisors and Inyo County Water Director Bob Harrington agreed on a series of comments to the department's operations plan and on the fact Resource planning has to be more long term than one isolated runoff year. Water Commission Chair Mike Prather presented the organization's list of comments, all of which were well received by the supervisors and will be included in the Water Department's comments that are due this Friday. The opposition to the uh, pumping the gravel pit wells, uh, 385 and 386, I think they're 385R now and 386R now that have been reworked and labeled as being new. Um, the, the feeling of the commission and the, and the public was fairly strong that there is a, a 1999 um, mitigation plan that states that those pumps should remain off permanently, and that was the center of the group last night. The commission as well as certainly the commission, the, uh, the members of the public. Um, the, there's a lot of concern about water table, water table levels, depths to water. Uh, we know that the we know that the water agreement uh, deals with soil moisture and the needs of plants. It, does, it isn't really based so as much on um, depths to water, but you can't you can't help but think about depths to water because if you always wait until the plants are dying or uh, meadows turning into shrubland, you know the horse is already out of the barn. Um, so there's a real concern there, and it was shared by staff that the, uh, the average depth below the baseline, this is an average, uh, in uh, the monitoring wells. Cuts to irrigation, if any, should be matched by cuts to pumping where appropriate. The five bridges wells shouldn't be turned off until the area mitigation project has reached goal. Water saved on the Owens Lake dust mitigation stays in the valley. Reduce pumping where appropriate to help the recovery of depleted aquifers and Owens Valley tribes will petition, petition the department for their full s surface water allotments. And Deb Murphy notes that none of these issues are new. Now in response to Supervisor Dan Tothero's question of pumped irrigation and mitigation water. Harrington indicated irrigation tailwater and the hatchery water do make their way to the LA aqueduct. Prather guided the supervisors toward the concept of water banking and in your supervisor Matt Kingsley ran with it. Using the groundwater as a bank. Then on years when there was a drought, we would agree to higher pumping levels because we had banked water to a higher level? I think it would depend on what... Because if you're, if you're talking yeah. about banking, 
you know, that's that's what banking is, is then when there's a drought, you, you, you start to use some of that. And I'm, I'm not proposing that, but I think that's an, I, that is an important concept that, that if, if we, I mean, I'm for that. I, I think we should get those, those levels up and and at some point, maybe it's even a little bit higher than where we think it ought to be, but then we do start to uh, provide a banking mechanism. And I'd love them to store water here in the Owens Valley. Than somewhere else. Than somewhere else. But when we do that, we also have to understand then that when there's a drought, we won't be expecting lower pumping levels, we'll be expecting higher pumping levels. Now the next step in this ongoing saga will be the technical group meeting scheduled for May 6th when the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power will respond to the county's concerns. Then it's on to the standing committee May 12th in Independence. You can see more on this story on SierraWave.net. Well, Bishop Union High School has a new teacher and a new head varsity football coach. Arnie Palu. Arnie has been a longtime presence in local media as the newsman for KIBS, KBOV Radio. He's done a great job doing Bronco play-by-play -play for football, basketball, and baseball for the past 15 years. Now, Arnie Palu has been with the junior varsity football team for eight years, the last several, as head coach. And now Arnie's going to be moving up to the varsity post that, post that was open after longtime coach Bill Egan announced his resignation earlier this year. Arnie Palu was gracious enough to join us here at Sierra Wave Media to talk about his new jobs. Arnie, congratulations. Uh, not only a new uh, teaching position at uh, Bishop Union High School, but boy, uh, head football coach. Uh, how's the last uh, few days been? You know, it's it's been pretty, it's been a wild ride. The, the word I keep using is uh, an adventure, and really it is. It's uh, I, I've been a part of the Bronco football program for eight years, and but this is a whole nother level. And so the idea of, of coaching is exciting, but also a career change, you know, going from uh, this business yeah. to uh, to teaching at Bishop High School. It's an opportunity. It's exciting. But at the same time, it's a big change. And with that comes uh, a lot of challenges. So we're, we're excited, but we're uh, we're, it's just a lot to take in. Yeah. Now you have a, a bachelor's degree from the University of Nebraska. Yes, sir. Yeah, the University of Nebraska Lincoln, and uh, I I started my career in journalism in Colorado, one year there, and then came out here. I've been here for 15 years, and uh, I, I love the job. And that's what this transition is is uh, is tough, and I'm it's becoming real now that I, I am going <laughs> to leave leave the the as you know standing on press boxes for years. Uh, it's a glorious business that yeah. we're in, you know, it's, it's sitting well, in the... it's fun. Oh, it's fun. Don't, I yeah. love it. I love every moment of it. But transitioning from that to education now and coaching, it's it's going to be different, but it's it's exciting. Yeah, it's glorifying, but not glamorous. Right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, tell us about what you're going to be doing teaching-wise at Bishop. So at Bishop Union High School, I'm going to have a chance to, uh, to work a lot with the kids in journalism. So we're gonna bring back the Bronco Roundup, which is which is really exciting, and folks hear about that, they're excited. Uh, the student newspaper okay. at Bishop High School. And we're also gonna be doing uh, a lot of fun stuff in the media realm and also working with student leadership. And it's just gonna be a fun adventure. Very nice. Uh, now you've been a great play-by-play -play guy for uh, KIBS, KBOV, doing the Broncos. So you're very intimate with the Bronco football program. Any changes you see coming up? That's a, that's a great question. And when we talk Bronco football, I, I arrived in 2001. And the same time I arrived, Coach Bill Egan arrived. And so I have not known Bronco football other than Coach Egan. And, and really, that's the way it should be. I mean, Coach Egan and his wife Maggie have put their heart and soul into the program. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't speak about them first. Uh, Coach Egan has just, I mean, literally, as you know, he, he, he is a servant leader. You know, he's the guy, he, he gives the pep talk but he cleans the gym. You know, he sweeps out the locker room. Coach Egan has his imprint on that program. And so when you talk about potential changes, I've only known Bronco football through Coach Egan. And so we're going to honor that big time. I mean, Coach Egan has been such an influence on my life, uh, on the staff's life. And so we're going to honor that big time. So right now, it's all brand new. I mean, we're looking at building staff. Uh, we have the relationship with the kids going already. I've, I've coached the JVs for, for eight years and, and been a part of the program. So. It's too early to talk about big changes, but we want to honor what the past because there's such a strong Bronco football tradition. But at the same time, you know, we're going to bring our own creativity and, and energy to the program, too. But uh, 
Coach Egan can't say enough. He And I will say this, in terms of his influence, he is a worker. And if I've learned anything schematically from Coach Egan, that pales in comparison to what I've learned him, from him in terms of his example of work. I mean, what a worker. What yeah. a guy. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to have to start work immediately. You got a little uh, spring practice, I would assume, coming up. Yeah, we're, we're, we're starting to de- – first things first, we're going to develop staff. You know, we've – it takes such a, a group of guys to, to run a football program. So we're right now uh, reaching out to the guys that have coached in the past. We're going to talk to the guys that have coached currently, and we're going to get that staff together, guys that want to make an impact on kids at Bishop High School. And we're going to look at spring, and spring uh, may look a little different than it's looked in the past. Uh, we've. How do you mean? Why? Well, when you have a program that's established and it's running and you go into spring with everything you've had from the fall, you just run the plays. You know, you implement new stuff. But we're looking at spring as a chance to come together leadership wise to build relationships with the kids. So it may not be so much X's and O's as it'll be uh, an opportunity to, to bring the group together. Yeah, I noticed that's what uh, Principal Randy Cook said something about. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, he really likes about you. Yeah, you know, <sighs> coaching sports are about relationships. And so for us, it's going to be a chance to, to really build upon that. I mean, guys will work hard if they want to win. Guys will work hard if they think they're going to have to run a lap. <laughs> but if you're pulling hard for your brother, you know, that yeah. you care about, that, I think that's a difference maker. Yeah. Uh, so you got spring, you got summer. All right, who's the first game coming up 2016? We have a, right now on the books, we got a scrimmage with Boron yeah. that's going to be, uh, I think Desert was there last year too. So we'll have that scrimmage to get started. Uh, but the schedule, I, th- I believe we open with uh, Whittier Christian again ah. on the road. So uh, Tough school. Yeah, tough school, good program. And uh, we're just excited to get after it. You know, there, it's, uh, it's an exciting time to be a Bronco, and uh, we're, we're going to have some fun. Great. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, you've uh, been a fixture on the uh, radio waves with KIBS. That's going to be a little bittersweet, I would think, to be leaving that. You know, it for my wife, my wife, Kellyanne, and I, I haven't talked about her yet, but, uh, you know, she – had such a hard time with that she was you know i think for me i was ready for a change ready for an opportunity to to move on to to something else perhaps not that i didn't love what i was doing but kel says you know it's just gonna be really hard to leave and i think she recognized it before i did and i'm realizing now yeah you know calling the kern valley game yesterday on, on the radio and thinking you know that might be the last time i see zach bushling hit a home run you know <laughs> or maybe not yeah you know? hopefully not, <laughs> hopefully yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. but you know it, it is tough and it's been my family there and they're great folks there they give me a lot of freedom uh, to do what i do there and I, I love that job and and uh but excited about the new opportunity at bishop union high arnie you're a good man congratulations bishop union high school got a fine thank you congratulations that. all right arnie Polly. And in a press release issued by the Bishop Unified School District, Bishop Unified High School Principal Randy Cook said Arnie Palu will have a tremendous positive impact on our students, both in the classroom and on the football field for years to come, end quote. Good luck and have fun, Arnie. He's a good man. We'll be back with more news.